Let's write a 1980s style game using a modern IDE. And what's better still, it's cross platforms. So you can write it on one operating system and compile it on another. Now, I programmed this game on Windows, as you can see here, and then I recompiled it on a Linux based operating system on my Raspberry Pi computer. And here it is running on my Raspberry Pi. This is a great project to learn a programming language in real depth, develop a genuinely complex application and have fun while you're doing it. In previous videos, I've given a quick overview of how to write either a form based or a command line game in Lazarus with object Pascal. But if you are unfamiliar with Lazarus and Pascal, or if you are new to programming and you want some extra help, well, those videos might have been a bit overwhelming because they cover a lot of programming topics very, very quickly. In this video, by contrast, I'll go very slowly so that you can code along with me. All you need to begin is a free copy of Lazarus with free Pascal, and you can download that from www.lazarus-ide.org. Now, a complete game is a very big programming project, so how do you get started? That's what this lesson is all about. In the next few minutes, I'll explain how to code the very first building block of a game. I'll show you every piece of code as I write it, including any mistakes that I make along the way, and I promise you there will be some. So you can pause the video every once in a while and write the same code that I do. This time I'm going to program a strictly retro style game, one that runs from a prompt. My version of Lazarus may look a bit different from your version. That's because I have docked the windows in my Lazarus IDE, so instead of having many separate windows scattered across the screen, they're all fixed inside one big application window. The code I write, however, works just the same whether Lazarus is docked or undocked. But if you'd like to dock your IDE, well, go to my Lazarus playlist and you'll find a tutorial that shows you how to do that. In fact, that playlist already has many other lessons on Pascal and cross-platform and game programming, which you may also want to take a look at. The link is down below. Now, how far I go with this series all depends on how much interest there is. If you want me to delve really deeply into this subject, please tell me. Either leave a comment or just give the video a thumbs up so I'll know. Right, now load up Lazarus and let's get started. Begin a new command line project, select project, the project menu up here, new project, and simple program and click OK. Now save it, uh, file save, and I'll browse to some suitable, let's create a new folder and uh, Call it adventure, whatever you want to call it. Browse to a suitable directory. Rename your project. Just call it adv for simplicity. Save. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. The program has been named with the project name I gave it up here. And this is a Pascal program, which however at the moment doesn't do anything. So where do we start? The essential feature of any adventure game is the map. That's the linked set of locations or rooms which define the world of the game. But a map is too complicated to program all in one go. So for now, I'll make the simplest game possible with just one room. First, I need to work out what a room should be. Each room will be an object. In the object Pascal language, as in most other object-oriented languages, an object is defined by a class, so I need to create a room class. For neatness, I'll put the room class in its own code file or unit. To create a new unit, I select File, New Unit, and save it. Let's do that file, Save As, with the name Room Unit. Dot pass and that's saved. And again, this is automatically 
been renamed for me. Now what should a room object have? Well, it should have a name, a description, and at least four possible exits to north, south, west, and east. Uh, later those exits will lead into other rooms, but for now it's enough that I just define them in my room class. So I'll add the class defin definition here just under the interface section. You can see this interface reserved word here. And above the implementation, the implementation section is where the actual executable code is going to be put once I've written it. Okay, so I, a class is a data type, so up here I need to add the type keyword. So I'm going to put that just here under the users. Users tells the code that it's using some other pre-written files at this point. Don't need to worry about that, so I'm going to define my room type. And I'll write room, that's the name of the class, and I need to say it is a class. Uh, so a class is what's going to define the objects, it's going to define what's in an object and any behavior of that object. And I'll end this with the keyword end, and it's already entered that automatically for me. So I need type, then the name of the type, the name of the class, equals class, and at the end of the class, end plus the semicolon. Okay, so within this I want the name and the description. So each of these will be a string, that's a bit of text. So name, that's the name of the field or the variable, and its type will be a string. Uh, I spell this correctly, of course. And again, it's ended with a semicolon. And description, again, type is string. So I divide the name from the type with a colon and end it with a semicolon. Now I need my exits, north, south, west, and east. I could put those as a comma delimited list uh, because they're all going to be the same type, and that is a number, full number, or integer. And I want a room to be able to describe itself, so I'm going to add a function. A function is the name of a block of code which will execute when I call it, and I'll call that get description. And that function will return a string. So that is my kind of my rough layout for this class. Now at the moment I haven't actually got any code in the class. Now I've got to write this down in the implementation section and there are certain syntactical uh, conventions that I have to follow in order to do that. But I can save myself a bit of time by getting Lazarus to complete uh, some of my code by writing this empty function for me. So with the function selected, I just press Control, Shift, and C, and you can see that Lazarus has automatically generated this empty function to match the declaration that I put in the class up here. Okay, so I could just put at this point some code down here which says result equals description. And what that does is if uh, somebody has set a description, I've created a, a room object with a certain description that says, you know, this is a big empty room or something, then when I call the get description function, it returns the string as declared up here, and the string would be the description field. But I think I want it to be a bit more useful than that. Oh, incidentally, I should mention that result is a sort of automatically declared variable that you can use when returning a value from a function. Now, result equals description. Well, I can do better than that. Result equals name plus, that's I'm going to append something to this. Well, I need to put something uh, between the name and the description, otherwise they will all get joined up when I uh, display them, so I'm putting plus a, a space character and then description and right at the end of it again a semicolon. And control S will save this, or you can select file save from up here. Right, all I need to do now is create a room object and display it. So let me go into the main unit. The main unit is this one that was automatically created when I created my project. It's called adv.lpr. And I need to put some code in here. This is what runs when the program is uh, loaded. And you can see that it's 
uh, added the room unit that I've declared to the uses section. Uses just tells it that it's going to have access to this code, the code in room unit. Right, so any code between uh, begin and end here is going to run when the program runs. So up above this, I'll add a variable section in Pascal that begins with the reserved word var. And in standard Pascal and in free Pascal, variables must be pre-declared in this sort of section. So I'll declare a room object variable. I'll call it r, uh, separate from the variable name from its type, which is room, and then again a semicolon. And now I need to create that room object. So that will be down in this section between begin and end. I do this by calling a method called create. So let me do that now. R colon equals room dot create. Create semicolon. Create here is the name of the constructor method. That's a special method that runs when a new object is created. Uh, pay particular attention if you're not used to Pascal that the assignment operator here is colon equals, not a single equals as you might be used to in many other languages. And uh, once I've done this, I need to assign values to the string and integer fields. Well, I'm going to do this. I could do this one at a time by doing r dot name colon equals then a string, a string in Pascal is delimited by single quote characters, troll room, and end with a semicolon. To save time, I'm going to go ahead and now add the remainder of the assignments to description and the uh, direction fields. Okay, so there they are. If you want to do that in your own code, if you're following along, pause the video for a moment and just enter exactly what I've entered. So here I'm assigning the string troll room to the name field of my new room, then description, those are both strings that gets assigned to the description field, and then the N, S, W, and E. Remember, if you look at the way that I declared the room, those are all integers. So I'm assigning a minus one to each of those fields. Now, eventually the four direction variables will be assigned numbers indicating adjoining rooms. So if, for example, n, the value of n was 6, that would tell me that by going to the north from this room, I would enter room number 6 and so on. Here, minus 1, I've declared that, that means no exit. And finally, I'm going to call the standard Pascal procedure right in. Uh, that will write a, a line, right ln and a pair of brackets to show that I'm passing some information, some string to write in. It takes a string argument, so I'm going to put you are in the space comma, and now I'm going to get the description from my room r dot, and you can enter, you can save time by pressing control uh, spacebar in Lazarus, and that will suggest things that match what you're writing. So I put r dot g. It knows that there's get description, so I can just select that, and it will write that in there. Um, if I want to, I can put empty parentheses after this. That's conventional in many other languages. In Pascal, you don't actually need that when calling a procedure or function that doesn't take any arguments, so I'll leave it like that. So all right, I'm now ready to go. Oh, one more thing, I'll put in uh, a readlin. And this is just a function, standard Pascal function, that waits to read a line from the command prompt. So what this is going to do is it's going to pause my program, waiting for me to press enter so I can look at the command prompt and see what's going on. Uh, if I didn't do that, it might vanish and I would never see what, what has happened because there's nothing else going on in this program. So to run the program to build it, to compile it and run it. I just press this run arrow up here. Off it goes. It'll prompt me for some uh, information here about debugging. It's not important, but I'm going to click OK. OK, so here I've made a mistake. OK, because I'm used to other languages in which I use double quotes for a string. As I said, I should be using single quotes in Pascal. So 
fix that. Start again. And this time, yes, it says you're in the troll room, a messy room that smells of troll. Why is it telling me that? Well, because uh, get description returns name and description. And if I look here, um, you will see that I set the name and description of this room to troll room, a messy room that smells of troll. So when it calls the get description function or method down here, that's what it displays. Of course, an adventure game needs more than one room to explore. If you already have some experience with another programming language, after this lesson, you now know enough object Pascal to carry on developing this program by adding more room objects and connecting them together to create a map, possibly as an array of rooms. Now, if you need help with Pascal syntax, use the online wiki. That's at wiki.freepascal.org. But if you prefer to be guided through the steps needed to extend this game, I'll show you a simple way to create a map and move from room to room in the next video in this series. If you want to make even more progress, go to the playlists page on my channel and you'll find that I already have a very long series of tutorials on writing an adventure game. Now in that series, I mostly use Java and C Sharp, those two languages, but the ideas, techniques and principles can be adapted for use with Object Pascal or with other languages. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new lessons.